Understanding Intermediate Accounting, Part 1, Statement of Cash Flows. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. You'll see our email and our website listed here. And also you'll see that the source for this video is from Wiley.com, one of the publishing companies. And the text used is the Kisco Wygant text, which has been a basic text for intermediate accounting for years. Why are we talking about statement of cash flows? Well, the problem for businesses is that sales does not equal cash. And the danger is that you sell more without collecting more in cash, and there's an important difference. There's a disconnect between sales and when you collect the cash on those sales. And as a result, we need to analyze cash, and we need to see sources and uses specifically, which means we need to know the sources where it comes from and the uses, where is it going? If I flip over to Excel here, what you'll see is the Levi Jeans Company Statement of Cash Flows, and this is an example template that we'll use. We divide cash into three areas. Cash flow from operating activities, cash flow from investing, cash flow from financing. And what you should think about is three buckets that my cash is going into and out of. And what we do as accountants is take all of our transactions, which you'll see on this video and others, and we put them into one of these three buckets, operating, investing, financing. The way I suggest to people is put activities into the investing and financing buckets first, and then whatever you have left over, that is whatever you don't think should be assigned to either investing or financing, is operating activity. So what I say in parentheses here is compute operating income from operations last, inflows and outflows from operations last, that's what is left over after you've analyzed investing and financing. So the statement of cash flows, you should think about sources and uses, and then also the change in the cash balance. Because what you're ending up with here at the bottom of the page, if we're looking at cash flow annually, is you started the year with a certain amount of cash. We have activity that goes on within the cash account. And we end the year down here at the bottom. This is cash at the end of the year. And this is cash that we're going to <clears throat> agree to the cash balance, excuse me, <clears throat> in the cash balance in the balance sheet. So this number should agree to the ending balance of cash in your balance sheet, and you should use that as a guide to know whether or not you're on track with putting the statement of cash flow together. What I've done now is change the Excel screen to provide a little more detail on the statement of cash flows and what each category means. Let's start with investing. What I want you to think about with investing is buying and selling stuff. And what am I buying and selling? Property, plant, and equipment, vehicles, equipment, buildings, land, and investments in other companies, investments in companies that are not your own. So this could include interest that you earn or loans that you make to other firms. It could also include dividends that you earn and investments in other firms. So that's cash flow from investing. If you look at what's in red, cash flow from financing, thinking about, think about raising money for your business and paying it back. Raising money for your business and paying it back. So this, for example, could be you issue debt or issue equity, which I define as the only two ways we can raise money to run our business, issuing debt and equity. We retire or repay debt, or we retire equity. And by equity, we mean ownership in the company like common stock. And lastly, um, paying interest on a loan that we have or paying a dividend on stock that we've issued, these are all financing activities. So the way to distinguish is, Think of investing activities as buying and selling stuff. Think of financing activities as raising money for your business 
and paying it back. Once you've analyzed your transactions and looked at investing and financing, everything else, that is the other transactions that represent cash, should fall into the operating category. And I put in blue here under operating, think day to day. You're creating a product or delivering a service. You're collecting payments. You're buying raw materials. You're paying payroll. All those other cash related transactions go into income from operations, which again is why I put down that's what I compute last and that's what's left over. So if I add up all that activity, that is my net increase or decrease in cash. I'm going to compare that with my beginning cash balance and I'm going to come up with cash at the end of the year. And that's how I get the cash balance that ties to the ending balance on the balance sheet. I want to make one more term that I'd like to identify here is current versus non-current assets. I'm going to cover it on the next video, but quickly, a current asset is one that is cash or will be converted into cash within a year. A non-current asset won't become cash until longer than a year, assuming that a year is your calendar year, your accounting cycle year, which is going to be the case in almost all cases. And lastly, where do you get this information to put into these different cash buckets? We're going to look at the income statement and the balance sheet to find that activity. And specifically, we're going to look at transactions that occur, journal entries that affect cash. We use cash flow statements to evaluate two things. Liquidity, which means checkbook. Do I have enough cash in the immediate future to pay my bills? And solvency, which is long term. Over the next year, two years, five years, is my cash going to generate enough business? Is my business going to generate enough cash, excuse me, to allow me to continue on to pay payroll, buy raw materials, invest in things I need to invest in? to make my business run. So really what these two terms, liquidity and solvency, talk about, as I put in quotes, enough cash to pay the bills. That's the who cares part. Why do I care about a cash flow statement? That's the end of part one of our video. You'll find part two on YouTube soon. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. You'll find a complete list of videos on our website, stltest.net. We do live tutoring, one-on-one -on -one chat sessions using GoToMeeting.com. Here's our email and our phone number, and we'll see you next time.